All right, in this lesson, we're going to be discussing events involving AND. So these are AND probabilities. And let's look at our first definition here. It says two events, A and B, are independent events if the occurrence of either of them has no effect on the probability of the other. So let's look in at an example of in independent events. If event A is rolling a die, and event B is flipping a coin, the events are independent. In other words, after I roll that die, or rolling that die has no effect on the probability when I flip a coin. So they're considered independent events, and it goes both ways. On the other hand, let's look at this example where we're not independent. It says if two cards are selected from a deck of cards without replacement, in other words, you don't put that card back after you pick the first card, the events are not independent. In other words, when I choose a card the first time, I have 52 cards to choose from. So once I've chosen that card and I'm not replacing it, the second time I pull a card, now I only have 51 cards. And so the occurrence of pulling the first card does have an effect on the probability the second time that you pull a card. All right, so it says here, and probabilities or and probabilities with the independent events. If A and B are independent events, then the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. In other words, we just multiply the two probabilities. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So on the first problem here, it says if a coin is flipped twice, what is the probability of getting two heads? So the way I'm going to write it is like this. The probability of getting a head and a head, I'm just going to use H for head. Well, it's just equal to the probability of each of these events multiplied. So probability of getting a head times the probability of getting a head. And so that would be one half times one half, which is a fourth. So all we're doing is multiplying the two probabilities. Um, on number two, it says, if a couple has three children, what is the probability that they will have three boys? So we actually did this problem before. Um, obviously, I've discussed the fact that my wife and I have three boys. Um, the way we did it before is we actually wrote out all the possibilities, which we call the sample space, all the all the uh, possible outcomes, that set, and we were able to determine the probability that way. There's another way to do it using and probabilities. So that we would say the probability of having a boy and a boy and a boy would equal the product of these three probabilities. And so each time your chance of having a boy is one and two. So when we multiply across, we get one over eight. All right, so keep in mind, um, in both of these cases, the first, uh, you know, the first time you, on uh, number one, the first time you flip a coin, that has no effect on the second time that you flip a coin. And the same with children. Each time you go to have a child, you're going to have a one in two chance of having a boy. It doesn't matter what happened in the pre previous occurrence. All right, so let's look at number three. If the spinner to the right is spun twice, find the probability of spinning. In A, it says blue and then a green. Well, again, notice when we spin uh, the spinner, each time we're going to have the same probability of getting any of the colors. And so it, one, the first spin will have no effect on the second. So let's go ahead and find the probability of getting a blue and a green. It's just going to be the product of the two probabilities. Let's see, the probability of getting blue is a fourth, and the probability of getting green is a fourth. And so the probability that we'll get a blue and then a green is 1 16th. How about three reds in a row? So the probability of getting red and red and red is just going to be the product of these three probabilities. So it's going to be 1 fourth times 1 fourth times a fourth, 
and you should get one over 64 out of that. All right, let's go ahead and do one more here. Now, if you look at number four, it says you draw two cards from a deck of cards with replacement. What is the probability of getting two aces? Now, for me, this is kind of unnatural. When you pull a card, or when you pull two cards from a deck of cards, normally you don't give the first one back. But that's the situation here. So just be careful um, when you're doing these problems. If it's with replacement, that means each time your probability, you're going to have the same denominator, same number of cards to choose from. So these are considered independent events here. So the probability of getting an ace and an ace is the product of the two probabilities of getting an ace uh, times getting the probability of getting an ace. Well, let's see, there's four aces in a deck of 52 cards, so it's four out of 52 chance each time. Again, since we're putting that first card back after we choose it, now each of these reduce to 1 13th, and then when we multiply across, we get 1 over 69. All right, let's move on to the case when the two events are not dependent. I'm sorry, when they are dependent. So if A and B are dependent events, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has occurred. So let's look at an example. Look at number five. You draw two cards from a deck without replacement. So this is more normal. What is the probability of getting two aces? So the probability of getting an ace and an ace, since these are dependent events, can be a little bit different than the one we just did. It's going to be the probability of getting an ace times the probability of getting an ace, given that an ace has already been chosen. All right, all right. so getting the probability of getting an ace on the first choice, or the first selection, is 4 out of 52. There's four aces in a deck of cards, out of the total of 52 cards. Now, remember, we've already chosen a card. That's why these are considered dependent events. So there's, and the other thing is, we have to assume that we already chose an ace. So now there's only three aces and there's only 51 cards. So it's a three and 52, ch whoa, I messed that one up. That should be a 51. And, whoops, let me change colors here. So that's 51. And so when we simplify, we get 1 13th times 1 17th. And if you multiply your numerators, you get 1. Multiply your denominators, you get 221. All right, so you might see if you can do the next, uh, or at least try number 6. And if you feel confident in that one, you might try number 7. And then you can see how you did. All right, so on number 6, it says if a bag contains 3 marbles and 5, 3 red marbles and 5 blue marbles, and two marbles are chosen without replacement. In other words, once I choose the first marble, I'm not putting it back. I'm actually going to select another marble, so I'll have two in my hand. So find the probability of choosing two red marbles. So the probability of choosing red and then red. Again, these are dependent events because when I choose the second time, I will... Um, have all, I will have less marbles because of the first selection. So the probability of getting red and then red is going to equal the probability of getting red times the probability of getting red given that red's already been chosen. So the probability of getting red on the first uh, choice when I choose a marble, well, let's see, there's three red out of a total of eight marbles, so three eighths. And then on the second choice, or selection, um, the probability of getting red. Well, I've already chosen a, we're assuming a red marble, so there's only choose to choo two to choose from now, and there's also only seven total mar marbles to choose from. So when we multiply across, we're gonna get six over 56, 
and you do want to make sure you're simplifying that to 3 over 28. On letter B, we want to find the probability of getting blue and red. And uh, again, this is where we have a dependent events. So the probability of getting blue times the probability... Oh goodness, I messed that up too. Let me fix that real quick. This should say red. Da, da, da. So this is red. Okay, so the probability of getting a blue times the probability of getting red, given that, and that should say blue, has already been chosen. All right, so the probability of getting blue, well, let's see, there are five blue marbles, so five out of eight. And notice there's only seven now, and there will be three red marbles because we chose blue on the first time. And so when we multiply that, we'll get 15 over 56. All right, last one. It says three people are randomly selected, one person at a time, from five freshmen, two sophomores, and four juniors. Find the probability that the first two people selected are freshmen and the third is a junior. So basically, um, this is definitely a situation where these are dependent events because again, the, the number of people is gonna decrease by one each time we make a selection. So let's go ahead and set this up. It'll be the probability, I'm just going to say, of F and F and J, because we want to get two freshmen and then a junior. So let's see, 5 plus 2 is 7 plus 4 is 11. So on the first uh, selection, we have five freshmen to choose from out of 11 people. That's our probability to, of getting a freshman. Now when we make the second selection, there's only 10 people to choose from and only four freshmen now, so the probability would be four tenths. And then on when we choose the third time, all four juniors are still available, but there's only gonna be nine people, so four ninths is the probability that a junior will be selected. Now let's go ahead and simplify the five, or the four tenths to be two fifths. Um, let's cancel these fives and then multiply across. You're going to get 8 over 99. Now, again, I want to, I've, I've talked about this before, but make sure that if you find yourself when you're doing your homework making mistakes on the arithmetic, make sure you use your calculators to check yourself and make sure you're getting your answers uh, simplified correctly. And that'll be it for this lesson.